Hi all, uh, today I'm installing Inpur on a new computer and I thought this would be a great opportunity to, to do a video of the install uh, so you can see how it's all done. Now um, when I was first trying to do this I searched for tutorials and all sorts of things on how to install it and there wasn't very good uh, there were certainly different ones out there on YouTube but there wasn't something that clearly gave a screen resolution so I thought well I can do that uh, I'm by no means an expert on this sort of stuff but I can present it in a uh, better way that you can see clearly now what I've done is I was recommended to uh, buy a cable uh, off of eBay uh, this one here is nice and cheap now this one's a cable soft uh, cable shack guy I should say um, which is no affiliation to me it was recommended to me and the great thing about this one is this guy provides the whole software pack for uh, DIS, INPA, uh, NCS it's all there with instructions on how to install it so I'm going to be following his instructions just uh, giving you a video on how that's done okay um, the reason why this one's uh, why, why this one was chosen is because he gives you all the files you don't have to search all around the internet trying to find files that uh, will fit or whatever uh, he actually gives you uh, a lot of files which is like uh, seven gig of files here of all the all the stuff with the instructions on how to do it me doing it on video I'm just going to be following his instructions with a few changes that I made uh, just to make them uh, more install on more computers the way he set it up you'll have some problems I definitely had some problems on a Windows 7 computer and my XP computer with the driver install for his cable so I'll show you how to get around that and that's very simple um, so we'll be installing that and I'll move to my uh, new computer which was just a 32-bit uh, second-hand computer uh, that I'm going to use just for the diagnosis of the car okay so we'll move over to uh, my other computer okay here we are on my laptop computer where we're going to install the driver and the USB cable first uh, from Cable Shack is where I've got mine. So the first thing to do is uh, when you buy the Cable Shack version you get all the files you need uh, on a disk so it makes it a lot easier than trying to hunt around on the internet. He's given you a set of inst instructions to follow which is all I'm doing is following the instructions with a few changes. First thing I'm going to do and this is a change is go to the utilities file here and I'm going to run this driver setup for my cable I'm going to do that before I even plug in the cable just to save time and this will help um, on on more computers uh, to get it running if you plug in your your USB cable first it will come up with an error saying no drivers found uh, when it wants to install the new device now uh, just to speed that up uh, and make it work on more computers because the Microsoft wizard for installing the drivers sort of is a little bit tricky and won't do it properly so all I'm going to do is double click that we're going to allow that through it's going to come up with uh, the, the run commands for it and it's installing the driver and that's what you want okay it's going to shut itself down now I'm going to plug in the driver, uh, the, not the driver, the USB cable and it's going to come up as, um, it will come up down the bottom, it's a little bit off screen as installed a new device and it's all ready to use because I've installed the driver first and that's really what you want to do. Okay, the next thing you want to do is uh, open up your controls, go to uh, your control panel over to the side it might have device manager there somewhere but I'm going to just go and show all control panel items pick your device manager and we'll bring that 
up a little bit larger for the screen. Well, it's not going to matter too much, but anyway. You want uh, ports, COM, and LPT. Okay. There's your USB serial port down the bottom. Uh, the rest are just other things. On this computer, they're all Bluetooth stuff. So let's double click that. And uh, we'll go up to port settings. We want to go advanced. And you want to make sure that the, the port number is on COM1, which it already is, and the latency timer is in milliseconds. Okay, and that'll help with um, just how many times it checks for your, like your active data and that sort of thing. Okay, they're the two things, the only two things you've got to change, and that will make it connect up to the input program. Uh, it needs to be on that COM1, uh, which will be great. And it, latency 1 will just give you more active controls, like uh, reading your, your, your live data. So, OK. OK, that. And we're done with that. The next thing we're going to do is move on to actually installing the, um, the program itself. Okay, so the next thing you do uh, need to do is to be able to install the impart is to open up Daemon Tools Lite, which is in your utilities here. We'll open that up and it's DT Lite. Okay, so I'm just going to double click that. We're going to install that. Uh, yes, we want English for sure. Agree to all that sort of stuff. We want a free license. Uh, all the usual stuff. And it's just to install. Now I'm just choosing not to send anonymous users uh, statistics off. Uh, I'm not even going to connect this computer to the internet, so that's all fine. Okay, the next thing we want to do is uh, the, the Daemon Tools Lite has opened up, and this will really, really just, it's trying to connect to the internet there, so I'm just going to shut it down cannot connect to the internet okay so um, the Daemon Tools light has has opened up and we want to mount our first installation file this is just so it reads the ICO files if we go back into our main things we can go to um, this one here and we want the uh, Edibus 6.4.3 first. I'm just going to double click that and that's going to open up in there already, okay? Okay, so once you've got that mounted into your uh, Daemon Tools, uh, Edibus 6.4.3, you just want to double click that and that'll bring up the files inside it. Okay, you go to your install folder. Uh, you want to open that folder and this top one up here Instaprog we want to right click that run down to properties go to compatibility and run this program and set it up for Windows XP uh, service pack 3 is ok and we'll just click ok on that Right, so once we've done that, on a Windows 7 or Vista, you want to be able to do that. If you're already on an XP, then you won't need to do that because you're on an XP. Let's double click that. Get the program running. Uh, there's a warnings going to come up. That's okay, we'll just put that there. We want it in English. We're going to press continue. 
We're going to press continue again. Continue. And we want this programs UK. Um, that's fine. So when we get to this screen, what you want to do is tick the completed versions of all of these. Press continue. You want to check the OBD. Continue. Starting the installation. Press continue and let it install. Okay, when this window comes up, you want to click OK. And we'll just go to full screen with that again. And the installation is finished, which is great. We can end that. And close it all off. Uh, if you get this one here, we'll just close it off too. I'm pretty sure it's installed right. Let's close all the windows out. We'll leave Daemon Tools up, and what we're going to do next is we want to um, unmount that one, and we're actually going to go back to our folder where we had our original setup. We're going to click this one. Just double click that, and that's just going to mount it automatically because it'll open up here. Okay, it's gone full screen. I want it off full screen, but uh, I want it moved over. There we are. Take it out of full screen. So what we're going to do is, uh, if I double click that, we're going to come up with this error. And just click OK. If you come up with that error, if it mounts OK, brings up the files, and that's OK. But if you get that error, we just want to right click that, and down the bottom you'll see Open in File Explorer and that will open it up and it's just opened up behind there so um, it's okay so then we need to if you're on again if you're on Windows 7 or Vista you're going to have to change your compatibilities if you're on XP you can just leave this bit out but we want to go into program installation and that's set up there we want to right click that we want to make sure it's selected right click that compatibilities run for XP service pack 3 click OK we want to go back into the main files this reference here and we want to go to the install file the insta prog again we want to select it first and then properties compatibility run this program for XP you'll have uh, different ones there but XP is the one you want to run it in click OK uh, and we're ready to